Hello and welcome to another screencast for TasmanCarthy.com. This time on the pen and stamping features in Scratch. For this example, I'm going to set up something really quickly. I'm just going to make the cat. As soon as I start the game, go to wherever the mouse is. So when the game starts, forever, go to the mouse. Okay, you'll notice we have different things under the pen. We haven't really looked at that yet. First thing I'm going to show you is stamp. We'll set it up so every time we click our character, it does a stamp. And this will become obvious very quickly what it is. So you can see I've started the game. It's moving around. Every time I click, it leaves a version behind of the cat. Something you might like to add if you're using this function is to set up a key, maybe space or something else for clear, which will clear the canvas. It's important to know that using this command, it's not making copies of the sprite that you can then control with things. It's just stamping on an image of where it was at the time onto the canvas. A good example of how you might use this is in a game that I can show you where you could make your own track to race a car around. So in this example I had one set of costumes which was all the different track pieces and then to make tracks like this as I'll demonstrate it follows around the cursor and whenever you click it stamps a copy so therefore you can stamp out different tracks. Now I had extra keys for rotating and changing costumes so the different ones would show up. But you get the idea. So by doing this you can make different tracks. The second one that I'll show you is the pen function. And this basically what this does is make a character or a mouse or whatever you want trace a line behind you. So you'll notice it says pen up and pen down. We'll set up that same script again when the game starts forever go to the mouse cursor okay when we hit space we'll tell it to put the pen down and at the start of the game we might set the pen color to whatever we like and we might also set the size as well to something much bigger. Okay, when we start the game, he follows the cursor around, but watch what happens when I press space. All of a sudden, it's tracing a line behind it. So you'll notice there's also pen up. You might like to assign a different key. Using this, you could make a painting game really easily where you have different colors that you pick on the side and then something that follows your cursor you have a button for pen up and pen down if you wanted to erase you would have something where perhaps when they hit E for erase it sets the color to white which means for our game we hit E for erase all of a sudden we're going back over and erasing whatever we like you might have it so you click to make that happen or you have different keyboard buttons to make that happen each one of those would be an input that goes towards your game. Other things we can do in Scratch. We've got some great things under looks to do with visuals. We've got all these different effects built in. You'll see it says change color, fisheye, whirl, pixelate, mosaic, brightness, ghost. Let's have a little experiment with those now. Every time this is activated, it changes the color of a character. So let's set up a slightly different one. We'll delete all of these because we're not going to use them anymore. When the game starts forever, keep changing the color effect by five. And you'll see that we've got a very psychedelic cat. If we put that to a smaller number, it'll happen more slowly. If we put it to a really high number, it'll happen really fast. 
We've also got these different other effects here. We've got fisheye. As you can see, it does that type of thing. You might also get it to change it by a minus number. That happens very quickly. Probably better with a much smaller one. Okay, we've got whirl. We've got pixelate. We've got mosaic. We've got brightness. That's a minus, so normally if we had a positive number, that should get brighter and brighter. Just like that. And the last one, which I find particularly useful, is the ghost effect. That will make something see-through. What you might like to do is to set up something like this. When the game starts, set the ghost effect to zero. But then, when the spacebar is pressed, a hundred times it'll change the ghost effect by one. So basically that'll make it, we'll reset it, it should make it disappear. Like that. You might have a different key set up where we will do U for undo and we'll copy this to make it quicker. A hundred times do the ghost effect by minus one. So we can make a character hide and then we press U and we make it come back. Very nice way to do it instead of just hiding and showing. Other things we have under looks. We've got clear graphic effects. Say you made something really fancy and it changes a lot and then you just want to reset everything. Maybe you give the user a chance when they click something. You put this on there. It'll clear it. Also you can have things like changing the size. You can see that every time that's clicked it's going to change the size. You might have a game where as a character walks further into the screen they get smaller and smaller to make it more realistic. So you get it to detect the Y, the up and down, and if Y is up here, set the size to only 50%, and if the Y is all the way down here, it changes it to 100% because it's gotten bigger. So using these combination of things you can do some really artistic games or projects in Scratch. So make sure you have an experiment and see if it works for you.